Okay, so um, we'll kick this session off. Uh, thank you for those who are attending. Um, I won't introduce myself. Uh, you would have seen me in the previous presentations. Um, this presentation is creative writing platforms in the Philippine, Filipino media ecosystem. Um, Claire Pannell will be presenting. Pannell, is it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Claire is a PhD candidate uh, and she works as a research assistant in contemporary publishing and a lecturer and tutor at the University of Melbourne in the publishing and communication and media um, programs. So thank you, Claire. The presentation will be about 20 minutes. Um, so I'll let you know a few minutes before that. And then if there's any questions and you want to put them in the chat or you want to wait until the end, uh, we'll probably have about five minutes before we end the session for questions. I'll hand it over to Claire, thank you. Thank you, Mark. Um, I would like to begin today by acknowledging the traditional owners of the unceded lands on which I'm speaking today, the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation and pay my respects to their elders past and present. Um, this morning, I'm starting from my little lockdown um, Melbourne apartment with a little armchair travel on the screen um, and not talking about Australia or its regions or regional media but instead exploring the media ecosystem of one of our regional neighbours, the Philippines, and more specifically, the impact of Wattpad, um, one of the largest global platforms for creative writing and reading on the nation's publishing and entertainment industries. Um, so Wattpad is a multi-platform entertainment company that launched in 2007 and uses its creative writing and reading social media platform um, or site as a data-driven discoverability um, mechanism for the development and commercialization of data and intellectual property. Um, this kind of pan entertainment um, business model um, that Wattpad has adopted was developed um, most prominently by Tencent and China's online literature industry um, and involves the sort of commercializing content through in-house multimedia programs, as well as partnerships with um, traditional producers and publishers. Um, and while partnerships between Wattpad and publishing houses and media companies can be seen globally um, in the UK, US, um, Germany and France, most notably, the platforms um, has been, has, is particularly embedded in the local Filipino media industries. The Philippines is a primary market for Wattpad. Um, this year, the Philippines accounted for the third highest rate of traffic to Wattpad and the platform ranked second highest in the nation in terms of traffic to books and literature sites. Um, and to explore Wattpad's position in the Philippines, I'm using a framework that I've developed for my PhD that adopts and extends Joseph Endick's connective media framework. And in the culture of connectivity, um, Vendick theorizes that social media platforms operate in sort of two distinct formations as individual microsystems that are shaped by their business model, um, content users and usage, technological affordances and governance systems, as well as in a broader ecosystem of connective platforms and media. And the relationship between social media platforms in this ecosystem can be characterized in a number of different ways through interdependence, interoperability, competition and collaboration or a combination of these things. In my research, I'm extending the sort of latter part or emphasizing the latter part of Van Dyck's framework by considering a sort of broader entertainment ecosystem that encompasses a connected system that is sometimes competitive and sometimes cooperative of social media platforms and digital publishing platforms like Wattpad, as well as traditional media such as the publishing film and television industries. And this is a sort of like a little model, a way to like visualize that for today's purposes, but it's not sort of like a static diagram. The term entertainment ecosystem was first used by Elizabeth Fife and her colleagues in 2004 to reference the mobile entertainment ecosystem in a sort of similar theorization to Van Dyck's connective ecosystem of platforms. And in adapting this term and Van Dyck's original framework, I acknowledge the centrality of mobile applications and digital platforms in contemporary book publishing and entertainment media. After decades of technological, economic, cultural convergence, resulting in part in many media and publishing companies adopting multi-platform business models, this framework sort of allows for an analysis of the production and reception of creative content 
across media sectors as it happens in the early 21st century. So Wattpad uses sort of social media logics of popularity, programmability and connectivity to leverage the content and data that is generated by users on its social media platform, mostly for free, into lucrative media products for film and TV through its studios program um, and books published by the company's in-house publishing venture, Wattpad Books, as well as another, a number of other in-house programs. Uh, globally, Wattpad has developed partnerships with traditional book publishers, including Sourcebooks, Hachette Audio and Hachette Romand, um, and producers including iFlix in Indonesia, Huawei Brothers in South Korea, and Hulu Sci-Fi and Sony in the United States, among others. In the Philippines, though, Wattpad has, a real, has had a really substantial impact on these industries, um, on publishing and media. And by September 2018, um, around 100 Wattpad stories had been printed by publishers in the Philippines and 11 movies based on Wattpad stories had been released or were in various stages of production. So traditional Filipino publishers and producers initially began acquiring Wattpad stories um, and authors through informal networks in the early 2010s. Um, in 2014, Wattpad established its first formal partnership in the Philippines with Pop Fiction which is a publishing imprint of the media giant Summit Media. Um, and the same year, major national production companies, including Viva Films, TV5 and ABS-CBN, began adapting Wattpad stories into films and television series, including TV5's um, weekly Wattpad Presents series, which were standalone sort of key drama episodes of Wattpad stories. Uh, nearly all uh, Wattpad originated texts that are adapted in the by Filipino media and publishers, media producers and publishers, um, a teen fiction and or sort of romance genre. Um, and an early example of this is a title called She's Dating the Gangster by Bianca Bernardino, which began as serialized fiction on a forum on um, Candy Mag, which is the one of the Philippines' sort of like magazines, teen talk section. Bernardino cross-posted it to Wattpad and it became really popular there. Um, and in 2013, the title was republished by Pop Fiction and was released as a film by ABS-CBN Film Productions in 2014. Um, in 2019, though, Wattpad brokered a partnership with Anvil Publishing to establish Bliss Books, which is serves as a sort of dedicated imprint solely for publishing Wattpad source novels. And this formal relationship with Anvil Publishing and Bliss Books and with TV5 for their Wattpad, Wattpad Presents series sort of furthers the or cements the platform's involvement in shaping the local publishing and entertainment landscape um, and increasing the platform's curatorial power to sort of put forward prominent authors and stories um, to be adapted. So given these relationships that Wattpad has developed in the Filipino media industries, my questions are um, what features of the Filipino media landscape have led to Wattpad's successful integration in the local media industries and what impact has this had on local popular culture? So media landscape of the Philippines is a long history of innovation and development has a very well developed and robust media and senior media landscape but is also sort of characterized by really acute concentration of media ownership in both the publishing and entertainment industries. It has a very well-developed national television industry that is dominated by a duopoly, both family privately owned. And television has been sort of a primary conveyor of sort of like popular culture and entertainment since sort of the second half of the 20th century. It's also the most sort of popular source alongside the internet for information in the Philippines above newspapers, especially in the regions. The television industry in the Philippines has had its own challenge, challenges though, most recently evidenced last year when the Duterte government did not renew the um, broadcast license of ABS-CBN, which is one of the largest networks in the Philippines, and it has, but it has not sort of experienced the same disruptions or audience fragmentation presented by digital technologies in other markets. Um, and despite sort of persistent socioeconomic inequalities that limit the potential of digital technologies in more rural areas outside of the sort of um, metro capitals like Manila, sorry, 
The Philippines is among the top 15 countries with the highest internet penetration rate and social media is really popular there. And digital and mobile technologies have sort of largely supported the television and film industries in particular as producers have been um, very successful in sort of reintegrating successful content from new media platforms into traditional broadcast programs. So with sort of like few independent competitors, the high media concentration in the Philippines meant that once WAP had, had successfully integrated itself in the media cycle, its prominence only grew. Um, the Philippines, um, young audiences in particular in the Philippines, which is WAP had's primary demographic um, and audience, also have unique right. fan practices that have sort of resulted in a really robust and economically viable fan base for Wattpad stories and authors that's sort of not seen to the same degree in other markets. So these include the highly attended annual um, Wattpad meetups at malls and book fairs around the country. Malls are like really popular event spaces um, and meeting spaces in the Philippines. Um, and Wattpad authors who are published traditionally through like Bliss Books or Summit Media or become Wattpad stars on the platform, which are the sort of like the gateway into paid programs on Wattpad, reach a kind of literary celebrity among young readers that is similar to creators and stars of like fandom centered texts and genres in the West, like similar to sort of Australia's Supernova Expo, that's a sort of like fan environment at author readings and, and book launches. Um, and in an interview with Demi Avalon, um, a Wattpad author who is published through Bliss Books, um, she noted that in the Philippines, when you become a Wattpad star or a republished and you reach that amount of followers, you're almost like a celebrity there. Um, and this effective fan engagement is extended not only to the media outputs of Wattpad authors, like their texts, but in the case of entertainment media and film and television, the actors that are fe featured in the film and television as romantic couples or in the Philippines they term love teams. So love teams are a really unique feature of the Filipino media culture and has become central in Wattpad's success in adapting and republishing romance fiction in the Philippines, but also the user experience of Filipinos on Wattpad's social media platform. So love teams refer to a pair of celebrities launched by a mainstream studio like ABS-CBN to appear in a succession of films, TV series, advertisements, mall shows, and other media like the KFC ad on the bottom there. Sorry, and are often interpreted to be, and sometimes are a romantic couple in real life. So by establishing with, uh, or partnering with studios with established love teams early on, um, like this one here on the screen, Kath Neal. Wattpad was sort of able to tap into this already established fan practice and the selling power of, of love teams in this region. So on the screen, we have Catherine Bernard, uh, Bernardo sorry, and Daniel Padilla, who starred in the um, Wattpad Presents film. She's, sorry, the um, film, She's Dating the Gangster, which I mentioned earlier. But love teams have also become sort of integral to the user experience by Filipino writers and readers on Wattpad in a kind of um, sort of feedback loop. So Ashley Gardner, who is Wattpad's head of publishing and studios, um, has stated that like hashtag Kath Neal, which is a portmanteau of Catherine and Daniel, was the most searched for term on Wattpad in the Philippines in 2016, which in part sort of like drives the success, successful reception of Wattpad and Wattpad produced media in the Philippines and feeds the sort of continued popularity of an engagement of, with the platform by Filipinos. Audience engagement with Wattpad stories and media texts in general is also shaped by another important and distinctly Filipino mode of reception, which is Kilig. Um, Kilig is a Filipino word that doesn't really have a straightforward translation in English, but sort of denotes an effective feeling of um, situation of excitement in situations of sort of love and romance, like when you're so excited that you just like have to like squeal or something like that. Um, it can be used as a noun denoting sort of like a thrilling feeling of elation or excitement, or as an adjective to describe moments or scenes characterized by this feeling. Um, and Kilig is a really important and highly unique feature of sort of Filipino romance and teen fiction genre worlds, especially among young fan communities, and is key to the sort of effective nature um, and of relationships between writers, actors, and readers in the sort of Wattpad Filipino media ecosystem, and supports the sort of successful adaptation of 
media and techs in, in this media space. So as a global platform with sort of minimal gatekeeping to the stories that are posted on the site, Wattpad has a, the potential to sort of advocate for greater, I have to be really quick here, greater diversity and inclusion in the local um, publishing and entertainment EQs industries. But what my research is sort of showing is that it's more so adapting to local conventions rather than radically altering representations or opportunities for authors who have historically been excluded. So in a country with over 120 local languages, Wattpad presents opportunities for a greater diversity of languages of Filipino fiction, but most stories published, in fact, the media industries in the Philippines written or produced in Filipino or Taglish, which is a combination, a language of like in mixes Tagalog, which is sort of Filipino and English. And the stories published in Bliss Books are also published in Taglish or Filipino. And this sort of limits the opportunity for authors from regional spaces in the Philippines who speak sort of um, small, more marginalized languages. So in an interview with Sol Tuberosum, who's from Ilolo City in the Philippines, where the local language is like Ilongo, the ability to like write in English because she doesn't speak Tagalog is a really important decision in um, publishing in Wattpad and engaging in the the sort of like global market of, of romance fiction from on on Wattpad and it was also important for her to be able to sort of participate in this sort of wider global space on Wattpad because she also writes LGBTQIA fiction and she wanted to reach as wide an audience as possible to sort of maximize her impact in diversifying Filipino representation both locally and internationally. Yeah, which she hopes to have like a positive impact for greater Filipino representation in the publishing industry, but beyond the Philippines. However, Tuberosum is sort of among one of the few writers writing queer Filipino fiction on Wattpad. There's only around like 100 stories on the platform that are tagged with both a tag indicating Filipino fiction like Philippines, Filipino, Tagalog and LGBTQIA fiction. So... This is sort of like perhaps a symptom of the broader socio-political context of the Philippines. These sentiments expressed by Tuberosum, like the quote on the slide, sort of indicate that while Wattpad um, sort of presents an opportunity for authors and stories to be free from editorial gatekeeping, there are still culturally specific socio-political reasons for the lack of inclusion and diversity in these spaces. So rather than subverting, I'm just going to end on a few more um, armchair travel images, Rather than subverting traditional texts in programming and publishing, Wattpad acts as a new gateway that feeds into a media, an established media system that is ultimately characterised by concentration media ownership. And its position in the Philippines sort of represents an acute version of Wattpad's global pan entertainment strategy and demonstrates how a global platform is adapting to and emerging in lo um, different local media cultures. But the Philippines can be considered as a kind of testing ground for Wattpad's pan entertainment strategy and is indicative of the growing interconnectedness of digital platforms and traditional media globally, and therefore a significant region for analysing the production of popular culture from creative writing platforms in the early 21st century. Thank you for listening. Thanks, Claire. Thank you. Any questions? Everyone can turn on the cameras, turn on your mics, feel free. We've got a couple of minutes um, for questions. That was great. Um, and I really liked uh, kind of listening to more of your um, kind of broader framework in quite a isolated region space as well. I think it was really nice to kind of see that come out there. Um, and I just had quite, it might be quite a big question, but um, I wanted to know where you see um, the future of your kind of pan entertainment model um, going, I guess, like, um, I know you're kind of looking at it uh, in a variety of places, mm -hmm. but I wondered, um, you, you, lots of the parts of it, um, are kind of slowly emerging over the last few years. And I wondered if you could speak more to where you think it's going. Yeah, it's so interesting. Um, because Wattpad earlier this year was, um, uh, the board agreed for it to be acquired by Naver, which is South Korea sort of like big telecommunications company um, and owns Webtune, which is another um, sort of similar creative writing and reading platform, but like really big in sort of Southeast Asia. Um, so I think, um, I think the relationships or partnerships between these platforms, which are sort of like 
growing exponentially with like Naver's acquisition of, of Wattpad. Um, we'll sort of hopefully or maybe like increase the um, the connection between um, sort of like Asian and Western sort of and like East and West for lack of a better sort of um, uh, term of content, which we're already sort of seeing with like K-drama and K-pop as well. Um, and I think these platforms sort of um, encourage that connection um, because the social media platforms are not bound by territorial rights in the same way that like publishers and broadcasters are. So I think there'll be more of a convergence of like um, sort of like cultural products in these spaces, which may be reflected in more traditional media as well. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? No. I, I have one um, which is probably a bit broader, but the idea around licensing. So mm. we sign up for a social media account and they, to some extent, can take those rights and do what they please with some of the content that we post mm. onto those platforms. So I'd be interested of maybe briefly talking about how is this licensing where we have the creator, we have the platform and then them presenting content to those, those other broadcast media. How does that play out? Yeah, so um, it's so interesting because there's like the data that we generate as like readers that can be sold as um, what had calls them insights um, to publishers and producers. And then there are the sort of creators who may have their um, work adapted or they may, um, there's the brand partnerships as well where Wattpad connects writers who are in its STARS program, which they invite into the STARS program um, to like write um, native advertising content basically um, for brands. Um, and so the STARS program is really um, central to like Wattpad's business model this way and the sort of licensing deals that it, um, it brokers. Um, when authors enter the STARS program, they're connected um, with what, what Pad calls talent managers, um, which as sort of this like weird, um, weird role. It's like an agent, but also like a publicist, but also like a mentor um, that helped develop the writers and um, yeah, basically like broker the deals, but I'm not sure like specifically like what the licensing is like, I think it's like very much traditional, reflective of like traditional sort of deals and, and partnerships and contracts and stuff. And what had just sort of brokers um, the relationship between the author and, and the producers, um, unless it's through the in-house progr programs like what had books or studios. Um, and yeah, but it is really interesting because once you post something on Wattpad, like you sort of forfeit some rights to it on the platform, but then um, through these sort of deals, I don't know, it's such an interesting, um, I think it's something I have to think about a bit more. No, that's, that's totally, that's yeah. totally fine. I, it's, it's a big question, I think, for all platforms. YouTube's doing a similar thing. Mm. You know, we've got Snapchat. We'll have plenty of other social media um, platforms that are going to be doing the same thing. Yeah. Like, What's interesting for me is when you post, you know, and using Wattpad as an example, mm. if I post a story on there, then I want to then go create that as a film, not using that platform yeah. for their networks, the copyright and all the other legalities that go with that. Um, I think that's why platforms like this are interesting, but it's also as a creator, what am I giving away by using that platform? Yeah. I don't think that like there have been like instances where, you know, authors like use Wattpad for like marketing. They like put samples of like published books on Wattpad to like for that inbuilt readership. And I don't think Wattpad goes after them at all. Cause I think it'd just be a really bad look. Instead they're like, look at this published book that you can access on Wattpad. So there's like a relate, like mutually beneficial relationship there. Um, where like, to go after them would look so bad that they don't do it, but it doesn't mean that they can't like legally, I guess. Yeah. And same with the publishers, if you're like cross-posting. Um, yeah, I think it's an, 
a random thing, but I was watching a Le- Lego documentary yesterday and it was talking about how people hacked Lego yeah. and rather than Lego suing them, they utilized it. And it was one of the reasons why Lego was actually able to increase its market share more recently. So it's that case of, do you go after them or do you use the marketing potential from that? So very interesting. Are there any final questions, Chloe, Kenya? I have a bit of a question, but I don't know if I have like enough time really to like <laughs> answer it. Um, but like, um, it's really, thank you for your paper. It was really, really interesting. Um, I'm curious to know, I guess, like from the acquisition side of it, like in a, in a publishing house, like, is there maybe less traditional, like, has it changed that? Like, I guess, is it less of a traditional pathway to acquiring a text? Like, or is it like, if you know, like the editor maybe just spends their time on Wattpad or is it, how's that shaping that sort of process? That's a good question. I feel like it must vary a lot. I don't think any editor who doesn't like Wattpad is using Wattpad to find stories, but like, um, I don't know if they hear about them or some that like gets sent them. Um, it would, I, th- I think it's um, not dissimilar to sort of like, you know, like in the sort of mid 2000s, early, probably more the early 2010s when like self-published books on um, editors were using sort of like the bestseller list of self-published books on Amazon to sort of like find um, the next bestseller, I guess, um, or like the next thing because it acts as a sort of virtual um virtual slush bar like and you can editors can see like how stories do without like taking on and sort of eliminating some of the risk of of like unknown um things i'm not sure like i should talk to like editors who have acquired what pad stories but so i'm not sure like from their standpoint but i think like um there's um a sort of sorry i know we have to end this now but um, in adaptation studies, there's like, you know, tried and tested, like if a book sold well, it might do well as a film. And I think that same logic sort of applies to titles and authors that like travel through this ecosystem. Thanks, Chloe and Kenneth. Thank you. Thanks again, uh, Claire, for that um, presentation. Interesting things. I learned a lot. To be honest, I didn't know too much about Wattpad before the presentation. So now I have some reading to do, obviously. Uh, We have a 60 minute break, lunch break, am I right? Yes, lunch break. uh, And then at one o'clock, we are back to concurrent sessions still. Um, So take a break. We do have a networking Zoom session that we're just going to open up if people want to jump in and chat to others. Um, But otherwise, I'll see you guys later on. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. See ya.